Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Weekly Darscast. Alex Moss here just with a quick intro for this episode. We're going to bring you three interviews from players that all won their tour cards at Q School earlier this month. First, you're going to hear from the former WDF world number one, Brian Roman. Then you're going to hear from the Northern Ireland sensation, Josh Rock. And finally, the player that had that agonising weight on the final day of Q School got the last spot on the UK Order of Merit to get his tour card for the first time. You're going to hear from Sean Wilkinson, that one courtesy of Matthew Keane and the Darting Nerds. Enjoy the show. I'm pleased to say I'm joined by one of the new PDC tour card holders for 2022, Brian Roman. Thanks for the time, Brian. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing good, thank you. And it's been almost two weeks now since you won your tour card on the second day of the final stage of the European Q School. What have the last two weeks been like since then? Has any of the excitement worn off yet? Been really busy the last few weeks because um, everyone wanted to do interviews with me, taking pictures, uh, asking me a lot of questions what I'm going to do in the near future now that I'm a, a tour card holder. So, yeah, it's been really busy the last few, uh, last few weeks. We'll come back to Q School later, but let's circle back to the start for you in darts. Being born in Belgium, growing up there, how old were you when you discovered darts and how did you get introduced to the game? Well, I was two or three years old when I really got involved into darts because my dad, was, my dad is a dart player as well. Um, and he went to local competitions and tournaments, so I was always going with him. But um, I started playing myself when I was eight years old. Then I got a set of darts for my birthday and yeah, I never, I never dropped them anymore. So from the age of eight, you've always played. Have you ever took any breaks from the game at all with, with other interests that come into your life during that age? No, not at all. It's always been one of my uh, my dreams to be a professional in darts. Um, I even gave up school uh, to play darts because someone offered me a contract to play the WDF circuit. But that's where I quitted school and uh, I concentrated fully on darts. Well, it's turned out all well now. In your teens, we saw you start to play on the development tour and also, as you mentioned there, the, the WDF tour, what was the, the BDO tour. How did you find those first experiences of playing at that level? Well, I was well, I was like 18 or 19 when I started playing the development tour and uh, the BDO tour. Um, so, yeah, it was really tough because I was still learning. You know, I, was, I wasn't at the level I'm, I'm at now. So it's been... Yeah, it was really, really hard. I was always losing in the Lost 32 because I played a seed in Lost 32 and then Lost 64 in the bigger events. And yeah, it was it was really hard, but it was all a learning curve and it all helped me to be the player I am now. Definitely. And I remember briefly meeting you along with my colleague Matthew Kinn at the World Masters back in 2019. You said to him that 2019 had been an amazing year up to that point, but earlier that year you were thinking of quitting darts. Why were you considering walking away from the game? Because I I didn't enjoy playing darts anymore. Um, yeah, I had a, me and my missus were um, building a family as well. So I wanted to spend time more with the family because I didn't like darts anymore. I, I didn't feel the joy in it anymore. So yeah, that's, that's the point where I said I was going to quit. But I gave it one more shot at the UK Open qualifiers in uh, Liverpool. And I went on to qualify. And uh, yeah, that's where, I, where it all started again. Yeah, that's right. You said it was your dad that said to you, why don't you go to the UK Open, Riley's qualifier in Liverpool, which you won to qualify for the UK Open, and that kick-started your career again. What was it about that qualifier, winning it, which turned things around? Was it just the, the confidence and the belief that you got from winning it? Yeah, it was really, it all had to do with confidence in, in darts. And I always thought I wasn't good enough. I was putting a lot of time into darts, and um, I wasn't doing anything else than just practicing and playing tournaments. But there were there were no results, so that's where I said, uh, yeah, why am why am I still keeping myself busy with darts, putting all the time in if if I don't get any results? And then my dad said to me, well, you know what, just don't play any tournaments in Belgium anymore. Let's go to the UK Open qualifiers. I was like, oh no, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. And I, and my missus said, yeah, you really have to give it a shot. Even if even if it's your last tournament, you give it. You have to give it a shot. Uh, that's why we went to um, what was it Essex first and then I didn't qualify in Essex because I lost to Kevin Painter in the quarterfinals and then uh, we went to Liverpool the day after and there I qualified myself and that's where uh, I really enjoyed playing darts again because the that was one of the biggest achievements I did um, at that point 
So I uh, started playing better and better and winning more local tournaments as well. So that's why I kept kept on playing. Yeah, definitely. The, the results start to come that year. You also hit a nine data on the development tour. You won the Denmark Masters, the Belfry Open, and you qualified for the BDO World Championship. How do you look back on that year, 2019 now, given what you've just achieved in the last couple of weeks? Well, 2019 is one of the most important years of my life. Because if I didn't, if I didn't get, uh, went to, to Liverpool to qualify for Riley's Up, I would probably have been working now instead of playing darts. Yeah, I'm really happy that I went to the UK Open qualifiers and 2019 19 just changed my entire career. Yeah, it turned out well. And the following year, 2020, that was the year when the world got turned upside down. But the year started for you by making that World Championship debut at the O2. What was that experience like playing in a World Championship for the first time? It was great. Um, yeah, I always feel really comfortable on the stage. Uh, I wasn't. I didn't put any pressure on myself. I just went there to see what I can do. I had to play Paul Ogham, who is one of the veterans in the sport. He's a great player. I knew it was a tough, a tough ask to win against him. But yeah, I missed some chances. And I played really well, to be honest. So that's where um, I kept on going. And I just gave it another shot every, every time I was at home. I was like, okay, I'm better. I'm better. I'm getting better every week. So maybe there is something some something going to happen really soon. During that year, you got the chance to play in several of the Players' Championship events as one of the invited players. You had two meetings with Michael Van Gerwen as well. What was it like competing in those Pro Tours, getting a taste of life on the Pro Tour? Uh, it was great. It was uh, My first Pro Tour I played was uh, my first game on the stage uh, on the live stream against um, Steve West. Uh, I, was, I was pretty nervy because it was a uh, live stream. Um, but yeah, I won that game. I was uh, really happy with the win. It wasn't one of the best games, but yeah, I won the game. And then the next game, I had to play Michael Van Gerwen, and I think I played really well. I think I was averaging around 95, but I still got hammered uh, by MVG. Uh, yeah, and then um, the next time I was invited for the Autumn Series, and I played really well. I was unlucky in a few games. I had a really, really good game with um, Scott Mitchell in the first day and then a really good game with Simon Whitlock on the, the live stream in the second day. And then I had a couple of wins the, the day after and the uh, last day. Well, let's get on to last year and over on the WDF circuit, you won the England Open to become the new number one in the WDF. What did that mean to you? And then I know the, the Lakeside unfortunately got postponed, but to go into that draw for the Lakeside as the top seed? Oh, I would have been massive. It was a... Um, yeah, it would have been a great achievement to be world number one uh, because you will be a big favourite. Um, there is no Belgium ever, Belgium ever been the number one going into a world championship, so I was the first one to do it. So it was it was even yeah bigger than it already was because I made some history as well. Um, yeah, it was really nice. As I mentioned, unfortunately, it was postponed a few weeks before it was due to start. The dates were clashing with Q School the first day with the, the final day at Lakeside. I know it doesn't matter now, but if Lakeside had have gone ahead on its original dates, what was your original plan if you did make the Lakeside final? Would you have then travelled to Germany to play Q School? Yeah, if I, if I did play um, the final in um, at, at Lakeside, uh, my missus would have uh, brought me to Germany during the night. So I could play on uh, on Tuesday, play the second day of uh, the, f- uh, the first stage. So I will I will always have been playing in the Q school, but in the end, I'm really happy that Lace I didn't go um, that it, that it didn't happen the dates that um, it was used to play because maybe I I won or I lost the first round against um, one of the players, and then I'm not confident going into Q school. And maybe I would have lost in the first three days already and gone home instead of gaining a tour card like I did, like I did now. On our show, I picked you as one of my picks to get a tour card before the event because I thought that you wouldn't be playing with as much pressure as other players, given that you still had that lakeside to fall back on later in the year if, if you were unsuccessful. So how did you approach Q School this year? Yeah, it's not going to be... Well, I don't want to be really uh, sounding confident or all stuff. Um, but... I always told my missus I was going to get a, co- uh, a car this year. I said, I'm don't, I don't see myself coming back from Q School without a car. That's what I said to her. 
uh, I always felt like I was going to win it. So I approached Q School with one of the Everyone say you don't have much pressure on yourself because you, you always have legs higher um, as well. But I did feel a lot of pressure because everyone's saying that WDF is, isn't good enough for PDC. So I wanted to show everyone that the number one can be as good as players from the PDC to gain a tour card. Well, you definitely proved that. And a, a big run on the, the second day of the first stage gets you into the final stage. And on the second day, you go all the way through the field. What were you most pleased with from your own game during that run to clinch a new tour card? Um, my finishing. I was really happy with my finishing. Um, yeah, I didn't make any mistakes in finishing. Every time I had, a, I had a visit to take something out, I didn't miss. Even if it was just one dart in my hand or three darts in hand, I, I always finished when when my opponent was on a finish as well. And my 180s were, yeah, my timing for the 180s was pr- pretty good as well. Every time when, when I felt really under pressure, when someone was playing their best best leg of the match, I still found the answers all the time. So I was really happy with yeah my overall performance. It wasn't my best best days. It was I still have much better games in me, but I was it was really consistent. So it was it was a really good day. And we've got to mention the final as well. 4 0 down and winning six legs on the spin to beat Jules Van Dongen, who himself would go on to win a, a card later that week. But for yourself, what were the emotions like after that double goes in? You've achieved that goal. You said you were going to get your tour card and you did it. Um, yeah, I just took out my darts out of the board. I was like, okay, I won the game. <laughs> and then I took uh, Jules Van Dongen's his hand and then he hugged me and he said, congratulations. And from that moment on, I was like, oh, yeah. I won a tour card. Oh yeah, and then the, yeah, the tears were just going all stuff because it was something I worked really, really hard for, and I just like I said, I wanted to prove a lot of people wrong that uh, they said I wasn't good enough for the pro tour, and that the WDF isn't good enough for pro tour, and so I did a lot of other players who was going to play on uh, Lakeside. They did as well. So. Yeah, and I watched your interview with the PDC afterwards, and you said that you and your partner were considering moving to England if you got a tour card. I know you've not had long since then, but are there any plans in place yet to make the move over? Um, yeah, it's if if we move if if I move over, it's just me because we have two kids and they have to go to school as well. But what I meant with moving over is just staying in England for a few weeks because um, if you have a few pro tours week after each other and you still have to do the tests and all stuff it will be more expensive to travel all the time than just staying in england um and other, yeah i can always stay with um dimitri in england because he lives in england of course so when he's staying in england i can always stay with him but we are never going to live really live in england because of the kids because they need to go to school as well Oh, that makes sense. And you've got a, a great practice partner in Dimitri there whenever you, you stay over. And we, we should touch on darts in Belgium. We spoke with Mike Decker a few months ago and he mentioned that the, the television coverage of darts in Belgium has grown in the last few years. What is the interest like for darts in Belgium at the moment? Oh, it's massive now. Since Dimitri won the, the world match play, it's been really, really popular. I think it's one of the popular sports in Belgium at the moment. It's, it's really massive. All the stores in Belgium dart stores they are almost sold out all the time because everyone wants to buy darts and boards and heads yeah, and everyone on facebook as well now that i want a tour card mario want a tour card everyone on facebook is posting yeah can we have some uh, merch from them and uh, yeah it's it's really massive now um, i'm also doing commentary on uh, on the local tv because of darts so that's where um, a lot of people started to know me and now everyone is texting me that they want my darts, my flights, my shirts, everything. So it's really, really big now in Belgium. Great to hear. And lastly, before we let you go, obviously there's lots to look forward to now over these next two years. We've got the Belgian Euro Tour coming up in March, which I'm sure you're going to be keen to qualify for. But what are you most looking forward to about being a PDC Tour card holder? The most thing I look forward to is just to enjoy the game, to play with uh, yeah, the top players in the world. I just want to prove myself that i that I belong there. I'm not going to, I don't want to prove everyone now because I did it a lot of times now, but it's just, I just want to play for myself now and just enjoy every game. I don't set any goals for myself because I will put myself under pressure. But yeah, like I said, I was the number one in the WDF and everyone said, yeah, you're world number one now. But I always said I was world number 129 because you have 128 two card holders and I was the best player after that. 
and now I'm able to jump to place 128. So I'm not putting my lo- a lot of pressure on myself. I just want to enjoy. And if I don't, if I'm not in the top 64 after two years, I'm just going back to Q school and try it another time. Well, Brian, congratulations again, and we wish you all the best for these next two years, at least on the tour. And thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. I'm pleased to say I'm joined by one of the newest PDC tour card holders, Josh Rock. Thanks for the time, Josh. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. And firstly, congratulations on winning your tour card at Q School this past weekend. What have the last few days been like since then? Has it sunk in now what you've achieved and what you've got to look forward to? No, it still hasn't sunk in. I think it's probably a sink in when I go to my first pro tour, but it hasn't sunk in yet. Well, we'll come back to Q School in a moment, but let's circle back to the beginning for you in darts. How old were you when you first discovered darts? How did you get into it? Well, according to my father, uh, I've been playing darts since I was about two, but I've only really come on the scene and started playing competitions since 2016. And what, what was it that got you playing darts then in, in 2016? Because at that time, I'm, I'm sure there were plenty of other interests and, and things that you are interested in. Oh, it was my dad when I was older, going to the pubs and stuff, playing the pub leagues and get, really getting into it. Talk us through those early years coming through the ranks in Northern Ireland. What was the dart scene like there? How did it help your progression as a player? Well, I played in the youth. I've gone through youth darts during I was 16 and it was my first ever youth competition. I actually went on and won it. Never played a competition in my life and I went on and won the youth. And what was that feeling like going in your first competition and, and winning it? That must have been some feeling. No, it was an amazing feeling because I never felt like that before because, it was my, as I say, it was my first ever competition, so I didn't really know what to expect when it came to the competition base, and that was brilliant when I won it. And as a teenager, you got to represent the Northern Ireland national team. I was looking, you won the Celtic Challenge Cup as, as part of that team on your debut. You've won singles titles as an individual as well. What achievements are you most proud of from those early years? I would say playing from the country was my most proudest moment, definitely. What was it like putting on that Northern Ireland shirt so early on in your darts career? Because there's probably loads of players out there that have played for a long time and, and never get that chance. Oh, it, was, it was so nerve-wracking. I just, the nerves were really very much there, <laughs> shaking like a leaf. And then as soon as I got up the stage, it just all went away. Not long after that early success you had obviously the, the pandemic shut everything down how did you spend that time darts wise were you still practicing at home or did you take time off? Oh, how, how did you stay motivated to play at home it was practice 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 because obviously pandemic had us all I was not working and doing anything to do was a practice so as soon as I woke up in the morning by to eat straight on the board and I've probably would have been there not even joking but seven hours because there was nothing else to do wow. steady because there was absolutely nothing to do well, I mean, think back to, to this time last year, we had another new tour card holder, Jack Main, who not many people had heard of, and he said exactly the same, that he put in so much work during the lockdowns and, and the pandemic. So for you, how much, how important was that, all those hours of practice, to, to finally have that payoff that you just had? I think uh, it definitely benefited me. So <laughs> not in a bad way, but COVID actually helped me. <laughs> Obviously, with practice... And that's all I could do. And it helped me obviously get my darts a lot straighter, finally find my right set up and my right dart and all that. So that COVID sadly definitely benefited me in the long run. Well, before Q School, you attracted a fair bit of attention in Killarney, making the quarterfinals of the Irish Open, the, the final of the Irish Classic. How much did you take away from that weekend? I took a, a lot from that weekend, especially after that was the Sunday. Yeah, I got, I got to the final, but. I never believe I could have 110 plus averages just yet and up on the stage against Nick, Nick Furwell, a very good friend of mine and I just play, didn't realise how good I actually played when I watched back the video. And a, a couple of weeks after that weekend you signed for the Big Five management and we've spoken to a lot of their players in the past suits, John O'Shea, Nick Kenny, Sean McDonald, Dick Hedman, they all know what a, a fine job they do for their players. Did it take long to say yes when they came calling? No. Straight away, straight away. And as soon as he, as soon as I got the contract and my hands signed, straight away. What's it been like being part of that team so far? Absolutely fantastic. Cannot be. Well, I can't be around a better bunch of people. Definitely not. Well, the next time we saw you would be Q School. Was that always on the cards for 2022, or was it something that came up after that good weekend that you had in Ireland? No, it was going to always for 2022. Always was going to go to Q School. And where to start with your 
week at Q School, day one of the first stage, you go through the field to qualify for that final stage with two days to spare. How did you spend those next two days waiting to then carry on your campaign? Well, I uh, took a wee break on the Monday and I went down and supported the rest of the team, Sean, Data and John. I went down and supported them and then I was back on the board probably. Well, I went on the board that night, the Monday night, but I was back on the board on the Tuesday. I obviously went down and supported the guys again and then um, I was trying to focus for the Wednesday. Well, that final stage comes around and after the first three days, you've got one point on the board, but you'd lost some tight matches, one with a, a 97 average. Were you still believing all was not lost going into that final day? No, I don't believe, no hope. That was on the Saturday. I was, woke up, was practising. I went to my manager, Paul, and I went there. Miller feels good here. I'm just going to go out and enjoy the day. Sat in the one point. It was, it was just, no. Pr- I said to myself, no pressure, because only at one point, I wasn't like I was going to lose a big lot. If you know what I mean, I wasn't sitting on four or five points, trying to trying too hard to win one or two games. I was just so I was so relaxed and the word get go. Yeah, I mean, we spoke with John O'Shea yesterday when we we're talking, and he said on that final day, you said to him and, and Paul, your manager, I'm, I'm going to give it a good go today. Have you always had that strong self confidence heading into events, or is it something that comes around every now and then? How are you feeling? It's just how I'm feeling. It's not every time. It's just comes and goes but I really did feel it on the Saturday when I woke up and a, a good feeling to have and what a run it was on that final day capping it off with an impressive win over Nathan Rafferty in the final even though both of you had already done enough before the final when did you start to become aware of the permutations during the day or was it only when your manager said that you'd won a tour card that you had a clear idea of how you were getting on that was that when my manager said to me but before the semi-final before we played Ted Everett's manager came up to me and said do you want to know what you need I was like no I'm here to enjoy it just let me enjoy it and he did he didn't tell me and after I won the first leg I seen looked over my shoulder and I seen big John O'Shea winking at me and I was like what's he doing because <laughs> obviously he already knew and he needed the one leg and I didn't know he just kept winking at me and I was like what's he doing <laughs> but then Paul came up and told me in my ear and then I flooded into tears with just couldn't believe it yeah, I watched your, your interview with the PDC afterwards. You said you, after you found out you'd done enough, you went for a, a cry. Was that just all the emotions coming out after realising what oh, you'd done? That was massive. That was all emotions. He told As soon as he told me, I started crying and I went into the toilet and I let out a big cry just with, I can't believe what I've done. And then how did you come back and finish the tournament, play so well, 99 on average in the final? I was just relaxed because it was just a relief that I've achieve something that I didn't think I would achieve well not I didn't think I would achieve but achieve yet I don't know it's still very fresh but have you had a chance to look ahead to what this tour card means for you for this year and, and next year what most excites you about this opportunity you've now got well playing playing with the big boys and getting used to the playing with them every week week in week out knowing I'm here to do a job the same way they're doing Got to mention the, the Irish start scene as well, yourself. We've, we've spoken about John as well. There was Kevin Benes, Mickey Mansell, Nathan Rafferty. They all got tour cards alongside yourself. And you look at the players that are already on the tour. Is this just the start or should we expect the Irish to continue taking over the PDC? No, this is, this is the start of us. Going to start to take over. Because it's about, there's a lot of big players coming through. And we're, it's finally coming. And we've got a question as well, as I said off air, from Neil Duff, who you know well. He wants to know, have you ever beaten your mentor? No. <laughs> and of course, yeah, they say that one, don't they? <laughs> have you come close before? No. They always said they always said to me, you have to be the bully at the start. And then every time he plays me, he does be the bully, to be fair. Given that one's the only one he has on me. <laughs> Do you see yourself practicing still with him this year even though you are on the, the PDC circuit I'll, I'll be honest I haven't actually I've never actually had a practice session with him ever practice it's really when we go to competitions and meet then we'll stand and have a wee practice with each other but we actually haven't went to each other's houses and had a good solid practice but that'd be something to look into and how much of a help has, has Neil been in your, your early career so far because I know that he's, he's he's played a part hasn't he behind the scenes uh, he helped me with mentally wise and focus wise to be fair and given me Way different games he try out and practice, but he in my early career when I was with seven, sixteen, seventeen, that was he was there, making sure I was doing everything right and what not to do and how to do it, and so yeah.
Good stuff. Well, Josh, it's a pleasure to chat to you. Really do appreciate you taking out the time to have a chat with us. Congratulations again on last week. Thank you very much. Tour card, and we wish you all the best for this year, next year, and, and all the years to come as a, a PDC tour card holder. Thank you very much. Well, all of us here at the weekly darts cast are still catching our breath from one of the most competitive Q schools possibly ever. And one man who arguably produced one of the biggest surprises of the tournament, although not to those in Cheshire, of course, uh, was Sean Wilkinson, who won four games on the final day to win his place on the PDC tour. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for joining us. Has it sunk in yet that uh, you are a PDC tour card holder? Yeah, it's actually sunk in now. So, um, obviously, when I got back from Melton Keynes, obviously, with my tour card, I was just an emotional, st- uh, obviously, emotional state. And then I actually, it actually sunk in on the Monday morning when I woke up. Uh, I've actually done it. And then, obviously, I've just been chilling out ever since. So That's great. Well, we'll, we'll get stuck into to, to that in a, in a second. Uh, just taking us back to the beginning of, of your journey, how did you first get involved in darts? Um, well, what it was, I used to practice with my dad a lot when I was about four, about 14 years old. And he, he used to just beat me up on the dartboard and I couldn't get near him. So, and then I, I'd, and then I'd just storm off because I kept on losing, as obviously a young, young boy would do. But gradually, I just got better and better and better. I, uh, then I joined the team on the, on the Monday Night Darts and obviously crew. And then from there, it's, it's just been like a big roller coaster, really. Um, and then I joined Shropshire Youth. Uh, play, uh, played, uh, played there, and then played the Super League. I used to play like six times a week. And then it's, it's just, it's just all come together, really. And there's, uh, there's obviously a county element in there. How important has, has county darts been in, in, in terms of your development? County Dars has been excellent. Obviously, well, I used to play for Staffordshire, but I wasn't very good for them. I put my hands up, I wasn't very good. But then Cheshire gave me the chance. And the first game was at West Midlands and I was on reserve, but I had to play because somebody never turned up. And I was shaking like a, I was just shaking all over the place. And I went up there, won my first game for, with a 31 average. Uh, obviously give it a big boost on stage uh, as you do and then come off and then obviously next game was like a 20, 25 average 26 average and then they put me up in the A which I wasn't actually I wasn't actually happy about it to be honest with you because obviously I was only a B player so I played my debut in the A and I had a 32 average and I, 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 I won comfortably at London, that was at London. That was, um, and then ever since I've just been playing in the A. So if it wasn't for obviously Cheshire County Darts, I don't think I'd be here right now uh, with a big smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's those sort of experiences, isn't it? Because you're talking about being on stage, you're talking about oh, you know, shaking like a leaf and you know, playing in front of people. You can draw on all of that in those high pressure situations, like you were last week. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's correct. Uh, obviously, last week was just absolutely unbelievable. Well, let's get uh, let's uh, let's re- relive some of that now, we, which we can do now that it's <laughs> all, <laughs> and there was a happy ending, of course. So, th- is this was your was this your first Q school as well? Is that right? Yeah, this was my first uh, first Q school. I didn't know that I was actually going Q school until like a week and a half, maybe two weeks before it actually happened. Uh, the deadline was on I think it was the fifth of January, and I put my entry. My entry in on the Tuesday, uh, I think it was a Tuesday, I think it was, the 4th. And I was like, right, it's time to hit the board now. And I've been, I was practicing, what, let's say about four or five hours a day, about four days straight. I had one day off, which it never helped. Um, but yeah, obviously on, on the day when, when I went, I was like, come on, Sean, you can do this. So yeah, I mean, it, it got off to... A great start because you started, of course, in, in stage one and uh, you were eventually an automatic qualifier on, on the on the second day. Wins yeah. over Jim McEwen, Nathan Derry and and, <clears throat> and a very highly fancied uh, Danny Lowby. Um, yeah. What do you remember about those first two days? Was it just a case of getting settled and finding a yeah. rhythm? 
Well, I, well, on the first day, obviously, you, you're going to be nervous because obviously you don't know what to expect. So I, I played my first game and I was, I was shaking, like I was just playing for Cheshire for the first game, for instance. And I, I averaged 72. And then from there, me, I just, I, I just obviously concentrated more. I, I everything that I was going for. And like my averages were, my averages were like 72 first game. Then it was 83, 84, 90. And then, and then yeah, yeah. Well, obviously on the, on the first day, I lost a, a young player called Josh Rock, which is twenty, uh, which is twenty years old, and he is he is very very good. So he's he's one to look out for for the future. Um, and then on the second day, I, I sat around all my friends and oh well, yeah, so yeah, all my friends, and I and one of my mates called Tony Richardson. He said, "Come on, Sean, you only need one point." I said, I'm not here for the points. I'm here to qualify outright. And I said to everyone on the table, I said, I'm going to Lost Eight today. And when I did, it was the feeling was just unbelievable. It was just overwhelming. So, I mean, it does take the pressure off, doesn't it, in, in terms of uh, you know, being then able to have a day off? and Because so many people were scrambling for points on that last day, weren't they? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like on the first stage as well, because obviously, because I didn't have to play on a Tuesday, and my, uh, my, my sponsor come down, and obviously he's buying pi- uh, obviously beer, and he said, "Sean, do you want a beer?" And I said, "No, I want my head straight for tomorrow." So I was only on bottles of coke, and yeah, it was just, and he's like, he pretty much had to go at me because I didn't have a beer, but I was like, "Well, if you want me to actually try and win this and get my tour card, I need to have the right state of mind." So, yeah, I just left a beer alone. Yeah, save it for the next day, definitely. And uh, so then you go into stage two and it suddenly it gets very serious, isn't it? Because there's only 128 of you. They're playing it like a pro tour, uh, which yeah. is good practice for yourself, of course. Those first three days, you picked up two points. Right. Um, can you? What do you remember about those those first three days? Was it? Was it... Well, on, on the first day... I got up, obviously, I had a shower, I had something to eat, but obviously pushed my teeth. And um, I went to the venue and then I saw like Ted Everts, Andy Hamilton, Scott Waits, obviously Daniel, uh, Daniel Lau- uh, Lauby, Matthew Edgar, Nathan Rafferty, Lisa Ashton. I can I can say names over and over. Right? But when I saw them, I was like, this is a tough field to get past. And once I got the one... What, uh, once I got my first point on the board on the first day and then the second day I never picked up any points because I lost to James Wilson uh, in the last 64 um, and then on the on the Friday I picked up one point and then obviously on the final day I was talking to Ted, Ted Evers I said I need to get to the last eight and I told everyone on the table like all my friends if I get past the 32 then I'll probably go on to win it because obviously my, my confidence was just sky high. And once I got past the 32, um, obviously played in the last 16, the, the guy that I played missed nine dollars at double. I took my chance. And then I, then I obviously, uh, well, I had a 12 dart in last leg, so we had to do a nine because it was my throw. And then and then I played uh, Nathan, Nathan Rafferty in the last eight. And they went 4-4. Four, four. Um, and I wanted double eight, and I had double eleven. I was like, "Show them what you're doing." And like this, I was obviously telling myself off. And I said, uh, "Well, I said to myself, I'm not going back now." So he obviously he hit double, and then he beat me. But well, when I was playing Nathan, I like all my energy just went. My leg was hurting, my arm was hurting, back was hurting. But but, I, but obviously, I never give up. Uh, as you're doing that, you just never give up. Because because there's always that chance you, you're gonna win the match. So yeah, yes, definitely. It's all it's all a whirlwind, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you know, just just reliving that that last day when you made your charge and and you got over the line. So you had three six five wins, which is uh, which is yeah. an achievement in itself. You were trailing Adam Mould and Lisa Ashton three two. Um, yeah. So you know you can't you, know, you show great determination to come back from that. And obviously, there's an added element of pressure playing Lisa Ashton, of course, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, of course there is. Uh, but obviously, with, with, with the way I was throwing, 
I thought I was actually unstoppable, to be honest with you. But I just, like like I said, I think them three, three six, five wins actually just took it out of me. But but you just you just never give up in darts. Uh, like whoever's listening to this, obviously never give up in darts because you always get that. If you get that chance, you can't take it. And if you take it, then obviously you just carry on, carry on, carry on. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's great that you say that because, of course, you're playing Davin Beveridge there. And, yeah. you know, who was highly touted, uh, you know, let's be honest, uh, going into that. And you're 5-3 down. He's had at least five match starts uh, yeah. um, at, one, at one point. Were you, were you aware of the significance of that match? Um, with the last 16, when I was 5-3 down, um, I think it was my throw. And I made it 5-4. And I turned around and I said to my sister, because my sister came to watch, her name's Kaylee. And I said, I need to break him now. If I break him, then I'm going to win this win this match. And then, obviously, he missed five darts at double. I went double five. I actually threw my dart and I jolted my arm. So I actually had a big snatch, but it, thankfully, it actually went in. And then, like I said, I had a 12 dart. And then, I, obviously, I was, I was on me. I was like, well, yeah, I was, I was pretty much on my knees. After that win, and then I have to go outside for a fag, as you do, to calm down. And then, yeah, I play Nathan in the last eight. Nathan beats you. you sp- you've spoken about that. And then you've got this awful weight. Let's well, talk, us, talk us through that. Well, I I got, like, mixed messages because I got told if I, if I win four legs, I've got my tour card. So I've won the four, obviously, four legs. And I was so calm and everything. I just wanted to win. I just wanted to win it outright, to be honest with you. And then once once I got told it, if Matthew Edgar won the tournament, uh, obviously won it, then I will be out of the slot, out of the 13th slot. So obviously I've got a chair on Nathan. I had to. And then, and then when I hit the double turn and shook his hand, I, just, I was just uh, obviously crying. Then I got up and then I gave him a big hug and I said, thank you. And he said, what, what were you saying thank you for? Like, I was like, you've just won me my tour card. And he's like, really? I was like, yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I, love, I love you, mate, like this. And I was like, wow, I've actually done it. <laughs> so Stories like that are just so, so wonderful. Oh, that's what Q School is all about, isn't it? Um, so... You, so your phone presumably didn't stop buzzing, I would imagine, at the news. <laughs> Yeah, well, once I got my, well, it, it never stopped all week, to be honest with you. Uh, well, once I qualified, I got about 50 messages on Facebook, 50 mess, uh, obviously, my family messaging me saying you can do it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I can actually do this. And then, and then obviously, when, my, when I got my talk out, I got, I probably got, about, I don't know, about 150, maybe 200 friends requests on Facebook. Obviously, I don't know who they are. <laughs> And I'm like, do I add them? Don't I? Do I add them? Don't I? Like this. And it's, it's like people messaging me and I'm, I'm reading it, but I'm not replying because my head's just in one place, in one place only, which is at dartboard. So, yeah. But obviously I said sorry when I got when I got home. But, yes. but, but obviously they understand that. So, so when you, when, Yeah, and when you get through the door and you, your family are there, what's the reaction? Well, well, I actually got back and I saw my kids first. My two little boys at home, uh, Michael and Oliver. Uh, I, I obviously I said to him, uh, obviously Daddy's got his tour card, blah blah blah. And then I said, right, I, I see you later, boys. Uh, Daddy loves you like this. And then I, I walked through my dad's uh, dad's front door, and everyone just got up, started clapping. And I was like, wow, this is real. Everyone gave me a hug, shook my hand, and then I sat next to my dad, and my dad had tears in his eyes. And obviously, it's just, it's just emotion. And obviously, my miss, well, my missus was on the toilet. Missus was actually on the toilet when I walked in, and then she come down. She gave me a hug. She gave me a kiss, and then she started crying. And I'm like, come on, just just get the beer out. Let's just celebrate, like. But she just won't leave me alone. Oh, it's 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 a it's an amazing story, and, and stories like that are just um, you know what exactly what Q School is all about, isn't it? So it's it's lovely to hear. So a, a chance now to thank you know any sponsors and supporters yeah. that you may have. Yeah, yeah, I've I've, 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 already, I've already seen my the guy that sponsors me. 
And it's and it's so like well done, blah blah blah. Uh, I went around for a practice with him the other day, and yeah, just just carried on. But but when I had the had the interview after when I won the tour card, obviously the guy asked me if I've got a dark shirt, and I said no, I haven't. He said, do you think it's, do you think it's like do you think you're ready to get one now? And I said, yeah, I need to speak to my sponsor, and my sponsor just ordered me two dark shirts, so. So that's that's one tick off my list. Um, obviously, obviously the next one is to try, uh, try and go and win a pro tour. Now, uh, if, if me if me has done, then I, I don't see why why I can't because I'm because I'm fighting well enough. But it's just it's just having that consistency now. That's all it is. Absolutely, and just uh, just quickly, who is your sponsor, Sean? Uh, uh, yeah, his, his name's uh, jo- uh, Johnny Bitson. Yeah, he does uh, like ultimate re- re- refurbisher. So he so he does, like does houses up, like you know what I mean. So, but obviously, if it wasn't for that guy, I don't think I would be. Well, I, w- I wouldn't be sat here. With, obviously, going uh, waiting to go to pro tour. So, so all the credit goes to him, really. So, and just lastly, I guess it's just a case of getting the diary out and. and... <laughs> Plotting yeah. your weekends. <laughs> well, well, well I've, already, I've already wrote down all the tournaments, like, but it's just too many because obviously you got to qualify for some, and obviously the Players Championship, which is obviously Pro Tour, and you just go because I'm just going to go there, re- relaxed as anything. But yeah, to, to, to just see what happens from now on now. Wonderful, Sean. It's been fantastic to speak to you. Thank you for your time. And uh, and, and all of us, the weekly task, is wish you all the best for the next two years, whatever it may bring. Thank you very much. And, and it's actually nice to speak to you as well. Thanks again to Brian, Josh and Sean for joining us. And thanks to Matthew for that chat with Sean. We'll be back in a few days' time. Yes, we've got two episodes for you this week. Myself and Burton DeWitt will be catching up, looking back on the first weekend of the Challenge Tour, looking ahead to the Masters this weekend, taking on some of your listener questions. And we've also got three great guests coming on. You're going to hear from Mick Lang, the manager of Mensa Sulevic and Roby John Rodriguez, get an insight into that final day of the European Q School when Roby John managed to get his tour card in that last spot on the European Order of Merit. Then you're also going to hear from Scott Williams, the player that won two titles on the first day of the Challenge Tour last Friday. And you'll also hear from the recent World Championship finalist, Michael Smith. All of those coming up later on this week. So until then, hang tight.